What's up, friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to the Visual Flow AI Retouching Toolkit Primer. This is roughly a 30 minute tutorial that I would highly encourage you to focus in on. Don't skip it. Look, I know the tendency to kind of pick up a new camera or whatever gear. We want to skip the manual and jump straight into creating. You probably want to do that here too. But this short tutorial is going to help you make the most out of these tools and really open up your eyes when it comes to the creative potential here. One of my favorite sayings from, I believe, Abraham Lincoln, actually, he said, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four sharpening my axe. This is sharpening your axe. Okay, let's get right into this. I'm going to divide this video out into five parts. Now, the newest piece to the retouching toolkit are the AI tools. So we're going to be focusing a lot on that. And I'm also going to be showing you how it kind of relates to all of the other retouching tools, as well as just your existing workflow. So dividing this video out into five parts, part one, we're going to talk just about the strengths and limitations of Lightroom and kind of what these AI tools can do. Part two, we're going to go through the one and done demonstration. So in the new AI tools, we have this section called one and done. These are basically one click adjustments that do everything. So we're going to focus in on that because I think most of you will probably be clicking there first when it comes to your kind of new revised retouching workflow inside of Lightroom. Part three, we're going to get into the tweaks. So the tweaks is basically in the tools AI kit, everything that comes below the one and done. So retouch, dodge and burn, enhance, and also we'll be talking about the tools and the retouching brushes as well. So this is part of the kind of legacy retouching toolkit, which are still incredibly powerful, but it gives us just detailed control of every element of the image. And it's also in this section that I'll show you guys how to update the presets, how to create your own retouching presets as well using what you have here and the tweaks. Okay, part four, we're gonna put it kind of all together. I'm gonna show you my three-click workflow. It's really a two to a three-click workflow to get to incredible images. Then in part five, we're gonna get into best practices. There's some really important Lightroom preference settings that I wanna get into. Make sure that you kind of optimize Lightroom to work well with these AI tools. Okay, let's get straight into this. I have here um, a few exercise files that I've actually prepped for this catalog. I'll actually uh, create these as DNGs and give them to you as downloadables. For, for those of you that would like to follow along, you'll have these, um, but you don't need them. You can just watch what I'm doing here. Uh, you could also load up your own images and follow along. I just want you to have all those options available to you. Let's go ahead and select an image to kind of start with. And what I think I want to do is we're starting first. Part one is the strengths and kind of limitations of what it is that we're doing, right? So what I want to do is start with this image right here. And um, let's go ahead and just go over what we have so far. So if you installed the new retouching toolkit, we basically built the tools AI. So the AI kit is now a part of the retouching toolkit. If you were an existing Retouching Toolkit member, you should have gotten uh, an upgrade kind of notice that you, you were able to get the tools for uh, a lower price. Otherwise, basically the Retouching Toolkit is just now a higher price and it comes with the AI-based features as well, okay? So what you'll see when you install is you'll see the tools. This is the Retouching Toolkit tools. And then you'll also see the Tools AI Kit. So the Tools AI has all the, the, AI, the new AI features that we've built into this. In addition, if you go to your brushes, once everything's installed, you can select any brush, go to the preset, and you'll also see the retouching brushes right here as well. So this gives you fine, uh, detailed control of, of basically everything, okay? So that's what you have installed. What I wanna show you quickly is the, the main new features, and most of these are gonna be pretty self-explanatory. I wanna focus in on kind of the newest components of the tools kit, the tools AI kit, because that's where uh, most of you are going to be kind of clicking and, and using this in your workflows, right? First, I want you to see what's happening with these. So I'm going to go to the one and done. And just for an example, I'm going to select retouch with pop and enhance. And notice that nothing's been done to this image. It's fully reset out, right? So if I press control apostrophe or command apostrophe on Mac, I can create a virtual copy, click the retouch with pop and enhance. You'll notice that AI settings are updating, gives me an estimated time. And then once it updates, boom, there's the adjustments. Now notice the image is still completely reset out. We don't have an underlying develop preset or anything. This is the original. This is the image with the edit, right? What's happening is if you click over in the masks, you'll notice that basically we've got, I don't know, 12, 14, 15 of these adjustment layers that are all making selections and doing different things. So it's sharpening the subject, it's whitening teeth, it's, it's smoothing body texture, enhancing background, burning down the sky, 
all of this is being done at once. Hence, these are called one and dones because they combine all of those adjustments into a single click, right? But what I want to show you is, is a bit of the strengths and the limitations of this. Number one, because these AI tools are using, um, well, adjustment layers that are selecting masks and making adjustments over multiple masks, it takes a lot of processing power. So if you're on an older machine, expect each of these adjustments to take a few seconds, okay? Number two, and right now I'm on a, a newer Mac Studio with an M1. I think this is an M2, but my laptop has an M1 chip in it. These do beautifully with this. I, I love, for some reason, Apple Silicon and Lightroom works so incredibly well. But anyway, okay, so it's going to take quite a bit of processing power, um, okay? The next piece of this is that the AI toolkit can only be as good as Lightroom's ability to make accurate selections. So Lightroom's already pretty fantastic. Uh, Adobe's done a really great job with these AI masking tools, but it's not perfect. And so as Adobe makes improvements to the selection, to the ability for it, Lightroom to make the correct selections, the AI toolkit's gonna get better and better in that same process. But during this time, you'll notice that, well, you have little exclamation points on some of these masking adjustments. Whenever you see this, it's because Lightroom either, it either is not present in the image. So it's saying, well, I, there's no teeth to whiten here. There's no lips to whiten, uh, to, to enhance here. And that's what you'd see in this image, right? Or it could be an image like this. For example, if I were to apply the same thing, I'm going to go ahead and do the retouch with pop and enhance. Well, you'll notice that it's having a hard time here making these adjustments. Not only does it not detect any of these teeth and that kind of stuff, but it's having a hard time detecting skin tones as well and body texture. And, and even when it comes to the background here, it's selecting actually the flowers. It's not even seeing the subject. It's actually darkening the subject and everything. The sky, it only recognized the top piece. The reason that all of this is happening is because this image is very busy to begin with, right? The, the couple kind of blends in the background. It's a lot of detail. It's just a very busy scene. And so, uh, you know, Legram's AI masking ability has not yet caught up to an image like this. This isn't going to be the majority of, of use cases for you. The majority is going to work fine. I simply want to show you that these are built-in kind of limitations when it comes to the AI masking tools. Granted, in the retouching toolkit, you also have all the standard tools, which we're going to be using. We have all the brushes, which we're going to be using as well. And those don't have this limitation. It's only on the AI side. That's important to understand that, you know, the AI pieces can only be as good as, as Lightroom's ability to make selections. Okay, so we've covered all of that. At the end, we'll talk about some performance stuff. So those of you that are working on older systems, I'm going to give you some key points. But I really want to get right into the artistic side of this and right into helping you guys start creating. So let's go to part two. Let's talk about the one and done presets. And let's go ahead and select an image. You can select any image you'd like. I'm going to choose this one. And what I'll do is I'll make a virtual copy of this. I'm going to go ahead. I'm gonna, I want to reiterate our workflow over and over. So I'm going to give you the two-click workflow that I would suggest. Start with your baseline preset, whatever that might be. You could be using Visual Flow. You could be using Develop. You could be using your own presets, other presets. The retouching toolkit is designed to work with all of them, whatever your existing workflow is. I'm going to go ahead and choose from the Visual Flow Modern Pack, and I'll select Soft Light for this particular scene. Um, and maybe I might flip this just to Hard Light, just to give me a little bit more of a boost in the shadows. Honestly, you could you could do any of these. If you want to do HDR, that works totally fine too, because it's going to lift more of the shadows, right? So maybe we'll just leave it on HDR. So once I've made that selection, my next click is going to be the retouching toolkit, basically. So what I'm going to do is go to One and Done, and I'm going to choose one of these. Let's start with Retouch with Pop and Enhance, okay? And that's going to be the second click. And with that second click, we get this. And now I'm just going to make my final adjustments. If I want to make any adjustments to white balance or temperature, I'll do that now. But take a look at this. One click for the preset, one click for the retouch, and here's the difference between these two. Before versus the after. Isn't that insane? And look at this. This is just the modern. So here's modern by itself. Here's with the retouching toolkit, one and done. Now, what's exactly happening with those one and done presets? Let's, let me show you exactly what's going on and we'll select a different image to do this, okay? So same thing, two-click workflow. Let's go ahead and choose first. I'm gonna go this time to, um, actually, we'll, we'll just stick with modern and I'll go with uh, hard light, okay? Just to kind of recover some of the, the background a bit. 
I'm going to go ahead and just adjust the exposure up as well. And I'm selecting both images. So that way you can see like, this is the exact same exposure and this is the exact same exposure with the preset. So you can see exactly what the preset is doing. Okay. When I go over here, your one and done presets, these are a combination of all the different adjustments below. So everything below from retouch down to dodge and burn to enhance, these are individual level adjustments. Okay. The one and done, they're a combination of the adjustments below and they're dialed in and custom tuned. The entire retouching toolkit, including the AI components, it's been tested over thousands of images. So just to get past beta, we have to go past 10,000 images worth of testing. So we've tested it, made adjustments, and this is what you see now. When I select something like portrait retouch, all it's going to do is do portrait retouch this image. And if I open up the mask, you'll see that what that includes is sharpening the subject, enhancing clothing, whitening teeth, enhancing lips, hair, smoothing skin tones. When you click the plus... Notice that nothing over here changes. It's all the same masks. The only difference is the level of enhancement. It's the amount. So when I click over here, you'll notice that I have an ability to adjust the amount of each of these, right? If I click up and down, enhance hair actually goes up and down along with this. So if I bring it back down, enhance hair goes back down, right? So what this is allowing you to do is quickly have fine tuning control with each of these. You can go back and forth the masks aren't going to change, just the intensity of each mask will change, okay? The next layer is pop and enhance. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete all these. I'm just right-clicking and hitting delete. So portrait retouch just does retouching of people. Pop and enhance is going to dodge and burn your subjects and kind of burn the background down a little bit. So as I click this, take a look at the masks that are being added here. Now it's decrushing the skin and I'll explain that one in just a moment it's enhancing the background it's burning the sky it's doing a quick dodge and burn over our subjects and burning the background so each one of these it's just going to do it to a more exaggerated effect okay I can stack these two together so for example right now I just click portrait retouch and pop and enhance right this is actually the exact same thing as this retouch with pop and enhance this is level one retouch with pop and enhance and the pop and enhance you can you can exaggerate so if i click this you'll notice that again none of the masks change because it's those two in combination and if i go down i just get more or less of kind of a background effect okay so the one and done tools are a combination of all the tweaks below that have then been tested across you know images and it's the things that we would most likely do but again look at the before versus the after on this this was just modern it was we did hard light and then we did the retouch with pop and enhance. So that's the two clicks to get to this place. Okay. Now that we have an idea of kind of the one and done side. Briefly, let's talk, well, let's go kind of into part three. Let's go over the tweaks and let's also talk about the other tools and the other components of this. Okay. So let, let's select, um, why don't we select this image right here or actually we haven't done a non-wedding image yet let's go ahead and select this one okay for this image i'm going to create a virtual copy let's go ahead and follow our same kind of workflow steps i'm going to choose pastel this time and i'm going to do hard light just so it's a, a little bit less contrast on this image and i'm going to adjust my exposure and we'll get to a proper white balance by pressing w uh clicking on the background and then i'm just going to adjust my my temperature Right about here is good. So between the first image and the second, you'll notice the exposure, white balance, everything's identical. The only difference is this is what pastel makes the colors look like, okay? So now let's create a virtual copy of this. The first thing that I want to cover is this. You can use um, the one and done preset. So let's say that for this image, all I want is this um, retouch with pop and enhance, right? It's going to add all these masks. The way that I think most of you will probably work with this is you'll apply something like a one and done, and then you might want to do additional tweaks. These are all individual adjustments down below, and each one of them is going to be a little bit stronger than what you have inside of this adjustment. But notice it's not going to replace anything. So if I'm like, you know what, I want her, her eyes to be more enhanced, I can click enhance iris. It doesn't replace the enhance iris, it just makes it more intense. I can also click the enhance iris and drag it up, make it more bright, right? I can do the same thing. I'm like, you know what? I want to enhance her lips a little bit more. 
where it was enhanced lips. Okay, maybe I'm going to pull it back a little bit so it's not that red. Um, I do want more of an enhanced clothing. That's good. So with the tweaks, you can click each one to strengthen uh, an existing preset. You can also click on the individual mask layers and adjust amounts as well. So that's one way to use tweaks. You can use them in conjunction with the one and done tools, right? I can go and say, you know what, in this image, I'd like to burn the background down a little bit more. And that looks really cool. Maybe see what it's like if I go an extra step. Oh, that looks really cool. Okay. That's how the, the tweaks work. They're individual adjustments. The other side of this too, is you still have all the manual control. So one of the things I'm going to show you is I use the tools in conjunction. What I'm going to do is close out the navigator, by the way, so we have more screen real estate. But I'll often use the tools in conjunction with this. So usually I'll have the AI kit and the regular retouching toolkit just open at the same time because I might want like a radial burn. Like I'll put a radial burn in the image, press shift M so I can bring it up and then just go and drop it like over my subject. This is usually in almost every instance, if I go from a, a two clicks to three clicks, it's because I want to add a, a radial burn. I also have other tweaks available to me. I can reduce noise. I can sharpen. I can enhance detail. So if I want to just lift, these are going to be general settings. So if I'm applying these, it's applying it to everything. It's not just, uh, this isn't like inside of your mask. This is just applying baseline settings. So I can change the level of detail. If I'm working with uh, newborns, I can reduce detail in the image so it's more soft, right? If I'm working with like kind of people, I, I go back to this or neutral. I can go to crush. That's going to amplify all the detail in an image. Um, I have this level of control over everything. But Inside of the tools, these are global tools that are applying to everything. Inside of Tools AI, these are masking tools only applying to specific things. Okay. The other piece of this too is my brush adjustments. So when I open up my masking panel, I can add a new brush. It could be a gradient. It could be a radial, anything. Once I click this though, I can actually select any one of these adjustments. And of course, the AI adjustments are actually built off of this as well. So you're seeing the same kind of adjustments, but now it's it's going to be a brush. If I wanted to enhance clothing, I could select details in clothing and I can now paint it over the clothing as well. Okay. So you can have that much level of control with each thing and, and you can go from an, an automated AI based mask over to individually painting um, these adjustments in. But let's, let's work through a, a couple more examples of this because I want you to see kind of the tweaks and adjustments in, in effect, right? I'll select, um, let's go for this image. This is my lovely little baby girl, Josie. I'm going to go ahead and just adjust the crop. And then from here, okay, I'll create my first virtual copy. This one, I think I want to do pastel. I'm going to do hard light just so it kind of evens out the light on the face. And I'm going to go ahead and start with portrait with we pop and enhance. Okay. What this will do is also burn the background down a little bit. I'm going to now select, and this is kind of my workflow. This is where I always go from this step, applying everything to kind of like making my, my final adjustments and whatnot for white balance and temperature, just because to me, it's easier doing these fine tuning adjustments last when the image is like kind of close, right? I usually save my fine tuning adjustments for last. So we're good right here. Okay, so here is the original, here's just with pastel, and here's with the pastel retouch and, and burn. So from here, if I wanted to make tweaks, I might do this. I might go, you know what, I'd like her irises to be brighter, so I'm going to select enhance iris. I'd like the eyes to be a bit brighter too, so I'm going to select that. Okay, I also like to make the clothing a little bit more bold, um, and this looks really nice. Now from here, maybe I'll blur the background just a tiny bit more, and maybe I'll burn the background a little bit more. Okay. And if that's too much, at any point, I can open up my masking layers, go to burn background, and then just dial back that slider. Now, usually, like I said, if there's going to be a, a kind of last step, I'm usually going back to just the tools, adding in a radial burn, and kind of dropping it right over my subject, and then balancing it out. I don't like things to look like they're too, you know, burned and whatnot. So this is where I would probably dial back the background uh, burn a little bit and keep it a little more on the subtle side. So... Again, those same adjustments, those same effects, if these masks are not correctly identifying something, then I can always go in, add a brush. So I'm going to go select a brush, and then I'm going to choose the preset that I want, and I can paint it over anything in the image. So you have the option of having manual control, complete manual control over your images as well. Okay, so that's how all the tweaks and the individual adjustments and brushes, how it all works in conjunction within the retouching toolkit. 
Before we go on to part four, where I'm going to do some examples kind of from start to finish, I want to show you one other thing. If you want to build your own adjustments, your own presets, let's select an image. I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual copy. Let's say that you start, maybe you don't even want to start with like one of the one and dones. Maybe you just want to build your own from the ground up. Well, I can go to the, the tools AI piece of this. And by the way, we, we labeled this, it's the AI toolkit and the retouching toolkit with the AI tools. We called it tools AI just so it fits nicely. So you have tools, which are global, and then tools AI, which are the AI based tools. So I'm not going to use any of the one and dones. I want to build something from the ground up. So what I'm going to do is I want some smoothing of skin texture in this. Um, I want smoothing of skin tones. I want to brighten the eyes. I want to enhance the iris. And maybe it would help too as I'm making these adjustments just for this image to be a little bit brighter so I can see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to just look at that. So here's so far the original and here's just the adjustments that I've made thus far, right? I'm like, I like that. And I want to enhance the hair too. But I also want to enhance hips. I want to do teeth, clothing, um, and sharpen my subject. I'm going to do all these and I'm also going to dodge my subject a bit. Um, this is what I love. And say I don't want to burn the background, but maybe I do want to enhance the background a little bit, get more color into the background. So here's the original, and here's just my custom kind of retouching uh, preset, right? So all I would do now is I can click into this, and here's all the adjustments that have been made now. And I can choose any of these, and if I want to adjust some of the uh, intensity of them, I can. I can pull this one up a bit. I can maybe bring the dodge and burn down and make it more subtle. I can tweak to your heart's content, right, with your amounts on each thing. Once you're ready, go ahead and go to plus and go create preset. You're going to click check none and then click masking. It's going to save all the masks that you just created to your own preset. So I'm going to go ahead and save this under tutorial. That's where I'm just saving these kind of temporary tutorial presets. And I'm going to call this Give it a name that's like explaining, it explains exactly what's happening so you don't forget what it does. So I'm going to say Pies General Retouch and Enhance. Okay, I'm going to press Create. And now if I scroll down to this tutorial set, there it is. I have a Pies Custom Finisher, Pies General Retouch and Enhance, Retouch and Finish. You know, obviously you want good names so you can distinguish these. But that's how you'd create your own retouching preset using the tweaks and the tools available to you. I would not recommend creating these kind of presets using painted um, effects. So for example, don't go and grab a brush or a linear gradient or something. You know, don't go do this, select something like a smooth skin and then paint over the image because when you save that as a mask, it's not going to work over the other images. It's because, you know, your subjects are in different places. What you painted in one area is not going to be the same in the, in the other image. So when it comes to adjustments you want to make to other images, use the AI masking features to make those selections. Use your toolkit. The AI toolkit tweaks all these down here, which are going to be already done for you. You just basically layer what you want and call it good to go. Okay. Now let's go into part four. Let's actually work through some examples from start to finish using the whole workflow all the tools available to us. And we might as well start with this image. So I'm going to see how simple I can keep the edit. So let's just start with that's the raw file with that little exposure adjustment. Let's start there. I'm going to go to pastel and I'm going to do hard light. Okay. That already looks really nice. And now I'm going to go back up. And you know what? For this image, I don't want to burn anything down. Pastel is kind of designed to be bright across the edges, everything. So what I'm going to do instead is just go click portrait retouch. And it's only going to do the retouch without any of the burning effects. And I can click up and down to get to whatever look or effect I like. And honestly, all those look good. But I'm going to leave it right about here so it's kind of natural and subtle. And uh, I love the brightness of this image too. For some of you, that might be too bright. But I kind of like that really bright and airy pastel vibe. But look at this. How simple that workflow is. And if I wanted to be like, you know what? I want her hair just to pop a little bit more, right? I'm going to go here. I can, number one, I could just go to enhance hair and just level this up. So I could just pull it up if I wanted to. Or if, if the enhancement didn't work correct and I just wanted to do it individually, I can go to brush. I can select. Let's go to hair. And then I can just paint this right over the hair. And that works too. So if ever you run into a situation where you're like, you know what? Um, my, my AI mask did not select the right area. Then you have your manual adjustment there as well. And that looks just freaking incredible. I love, I love the, how simple that is and just easy piece. Let's do another one. Okay. So we have this image. You guys probably recognize Kiara. Let's go ahead and do, um, I'm going to start with the mood pack. Again, I'm choosing different looks right now because I want you guys to see 
how the the retouching tools work regardless of of what presets that you're using okay so i'm going to go ahead and select this create a virtual copy now let's add this go around i do want a bit of lift so i want some retouching with pop and enhance that's going to be my second click and oh my gosh this is basically good to go i'm going to brighten this up a little bit i, I love the temperature actually where it's at i might just go a slight bit warmer i don't feel like this really needs anything else to be honest if anything maybe i would um let's just look at the mask real fast it looks like it detected everything i would go probably brighten the eyes a bit more see if we can get the eyes just to lift up a little bit more and maybe a little bit more on the t on the clothes and i love that look at this before after that's wild let's go ahead and do an edit on this one i'm going to go ahead and go to the virtual copy and let's select the uh, preset we want to use here I'm going to go to Radiant. We're going to do Hard Light with Radiant, okay? And then here, I'm going to click Previous so that we have the same. You don't have to do all these virtual copies. This is just for comparison purposes. Now let's go to Retouch with Pop and Enhance. One of the things that I love doing is just pulling contrast a bit down to kind of control the overall scene. Um, it, it looks really, really nice. It kind of finishes it out here. The other thing I might do on this image too is just the, the burning of the sky. I might lift that a little bit so it's not as as much okay and i love this i mean look at the before versus the after on this that's just wild i'm going to go ahead with this one let's just do modern so i'm going to select a different look for this that looks really nice i'm going to create a virtual copy and why don't we not even burn this one let's just do the portrait retouch so i'm going to start with the plus see if that's enough or if i want more i mean all three of these levels i feel like work on this it looks gorgeous Okay, I'm going to select all these, get to the right white balance, drop my contrast maybe a little bit, and just look at this. This is this is bonkers. We're spending a lot of time on more of the um, AI side because this is really where most of you are probably going to shift to in terms of workflow. But usually from here, my, my next click is almost always just the radial burn. I'll go ahead and press Shift M, grab the burn, and just bring it right over my subject. And, uh, and then I'll just change the direction of it. That's that's really all I'm typically doing. Otherwise, because in most cases, it's it's making the correct selections, right? I might grab the clothing and be like, you know what? I want to enhance the clothing a bit more. Let's make it pop a bit more. And, and I, I really love that. But just keep in mind that you do have still all of your other adjustments there. So if I wanted to bring in a mask, so I can bring in a brush and I can make this do anything that I want. Your retouching toolkit also includes the same tools the same adjustments it actually is even more detailed over on this side with what you can do but on a localized basis so from enhancing the sky to adding retouch mascara you know this is going to be the most level of detail uh, versus over here it's going to be more automated and it's going to be not only ai based but it's doing the um, the bulk of what we might apply across images as opposed to like things that might be selective if that makes sense okay so i promise 30 minutes there's one more section of this and then we're going to be all done the last thing I want to talk about is just best practices, overall workflow, just some ideas to help you get the most out of performance, okay? A couple quick notes. So right now I'm working on a Mac Studio. You'll notice that it's handling everything beautifully. On my laptop, which is an M1 chip, it does everything beautifully. I can still, with 15 masks on this computer, this computer has an M2 chip, I can still move things around without any lag. It's, it's awesome. I developed this entire system, though, on my Windows machine, which is like five years old, and that machine was struggling. When I would apply some of these adjustments, it can take three, five seconds for it to add all these masks. When I go into like uh, adjusting a masking layer like, like this, it's, it, it drags, okay? So a, a couple things. The first thing that I want you guys to do is, is press uh, command a comma or control comma if you're on a Windows machine to bring up your preferences. You're going to go, if you're in any other tab, just jump over to the performance tab. There's a few things that are going to heavily impact the performance of this, okay? One is making sure that your computer supports full acceleration. So if your graphics chip, if your computer is on the older side and it says does not support full acceleration, that's going to be an issue you might want to consider an upgrade, especially if you're going to consider using these tools often, right? There's not, there's not too much we can do on this side. As, as Lightroom improves, as these tools come available to us, sometimes we have to just upgrade our machine. Otherwise, we, we can't really utilize them too well, or they're just really slow. I usually like to keep my camera raw cache setting on the fastest drive you have available. I also increase the size of this to like 25 gigs. But the two main features here, when Lightroom by default is switched to this, it's hover preview of presets 
and use smart previews instead of originals is turned off. What this does, whenever I mouse over an adjustment, it shows me that adjustment to the image. The issue with this, when it's by default turned on, is when you mouse over an AI tool, it has to detect and process, and that takes a good amount of time. So just mousing over these tools, you'll notice, causes it to hang. So that's the first thing we want to turn off. We want to go and turn off enable hover of presets so that it's not doing that anymore. And it'll do it, by the way, in the navigator too, where it's previewing up here. So we turn that off. I also like to close down the navigator so it's one less thing for it to compute. Um, but now it doesn't do that hover preview thing. We can just keep you know, moving and, and be fine. The second piece is I want you to turn on use smart previews instead of originals for image editing. This one is absolutely huge. Now, you might notice that when it renders previews of images, there might be like little artifacts, right? Like it might not render it completely accurate. So if it does that, like I don't know if it's doing on any of these, but if it does that, click into the image and once it actually renders the, the preview of the image and you click back out, then you see everything as it is, right? I would much rather have that feature turned on always. And if I need a full resolution preview, I just click in. Most of the time, I don't need that. So I'd rather have Lightroom running very efficiently than kind of sacrifice that, that piece. So those are the two settings. Turn off hover preview, turn on smart previews instead of originals for image editing, okay? Those are the two main things when it comes to the performance side. The other thing I wanted to recommend is just a, a, a practical tip when it comes to your own workflow or the way that you approach the edit, right? So let's use this image as an example. What I would typically do is, is I'm not creating all these virtual copies when I edit, but what I would typically do is I'm going to choose the preset that I like for the image. Let's say it's HDR natural in this case. Now, if I notice that there's like these flower petals that I don't like and I want to edit them out, if I apply the retouch with pop and enhance first and I'm like, oh, I love this. It looks so good. And let me back off the uh, effect a little bit. And I go down here and I start selecting my, my adjustment layer and I start zooming in and now I'm like trying to heal this stuff, you'll notice that it hangs a bit. And the slower your machine is, the more it's going to hang even more, right? It's going to have little hiccups doing this kind of stuff. So instead, when it comes to healing and local adjustments and these types of things, what I usually like to do is do that second. So if I go to the masks, okay, I'm going to delete all the empty masks. So, oops, I'm going to delete, sorry, all the masks. Okay, from here, this is where I would actually start doing the healing. So I would go and do the healing, okay? And now it's it's working much smoother. You'll notice that it doesn't hang nearly as much. Oops, don't need that one. And then I'm gonna go over here, this one, and get this one. And it's doing a much better job now. Then, after doing those adjustments, that's when I would apply like the AI masking because now it's gonna add those 15 layers. I don't really wanna be going in after it does that and start doing a lot of local adjustments because it's gonna slow down. So just a couple tips there. I also wanna give you one of the things that, uh, just before we close out, some of the practical mistakes that I see quite a bit. We, we gave the toolkit to um, uh, some of our alpha users, right? Um, like we, we selected a group of people and they got the alpha toolkit. One of the things that I noticed, one of the mistakes that, that people made a lot was we, yes, we have the ability now, like if I select a preset, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, radiant and let's do tungsten because this is like outdoors in like sunset of a vibe. And so I'm going to go ahead and correct for that a bit. Okay, let's do that. I love it right here. So now we have the same, this is the raw file with the same exposure, same white balance. And here is with radiant hard light. Okay. Just because you have the ability to burn down your background, like what I typically would see is people just go to the retouch with pop and enhance and like, oh my gosh, I'm going to apply this to every single image. And on this image, it actually works, which kind of defeats the purpose. But what happens is you get something that looks unnatural. What I see, the biggest mistake that I see people doing is that they keep burning down the backgrounds too much because they have that ability now. And what I want to say is, error on the side of being more subtle, okay? Especially if your background's already a bit darker. In this instance, the background is, is just as bright, if not brighter than my subject, right? But if your background's already dark, don't burn it down more. And when you get to this place, like I'd say this is just about right, okay? If you want any more burn, I would go to the radial burn, okay? Go back to the toolkit, add a radial burn, place it right over where you'd like it, 
And that's going to be much more natural than continuing to try to burn down the background over your subject. It's going to look very unnatural. You'll start to see artifacts. One example of that is, is like here, right? So if I keep burning this image down, if I go, let's go to burn sky plus, right? You start noticing artifacting where the mask is not perfect. And the solution to this is just don't burn it down that much. As you back it off, as you make it more natural and more subtle, then those artifacts kind of disappear. So that's the last little bit in terms of getting the most out of this, in terms of like kind of best practices. We covered performance. Um, we covered kind of like the editing workflow, making sure that you're not trying to do healing and local adjustments when you've already added so many layers to your image. And last but not least, um, be more subtle on your editing side. And I'll do more tutorials around that as well. I hope you found this very helpful. I hope this is just making your brain explode with creative possibilities and ideas. And I can't wait to see what you actually create with the new retouching toolkit with all the new AI features. So I would love for you guys to jump into our Facebook group. We will provide a link. We'll show in the video and we'll also post a link to wherever you see this video as well. It's a place to share your ideas, ask questions, of course, post all the incredible images that you're going to be creating, all of that. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and the support that you've given us. And uh, I'll see you in the next video and I'll see you inside the group. Peace.